It's Friday, April 1st, and the time for your body is to be morning news update. Prime Minister Mia Motley is standing by her government's decision despite a last-minute plea from the Barbados Beverage Coalition to roll back the tax hike on sugar-sweetened beverages. On Wednesday, concerned stakeholders issued a joint statement urging policymakers to pursue other solutions to the health-related challenges facing the country instead of moving the excise tax from 10 to 20%. But Prime Minister Motley on Thursday declared that it would be an act of treason not to insist on reducing the country's reliance on sugar mere hours before the new measure is implemented. We are a society that has one of the highest incidents of obesity, childhood obesity and adult obesity. And it is against that backdrop that I say to the soft drink um, and, sweet, and, and sweetened drinks manufacturers, that our tax is not intended to penalize them, but it is intended to save our people. And we want to save our people by ensuring that they have less access to sugar because we simply cannot carry the cost anymore of the level of diabetes, hypertension, and other chronic NCDs that are engulfing this nation. When I see the numbers with respect to dialysis and the extent and pace at which they are growing, Believe you me, I would be committing an act of treason if I do not insist on us reducing our reliance on sugar in this country. We believe that those firms should continue to make money because we recognize that not everybody wants to drink water. I like water. I like to mind my own business too. <laughs> But we recognize that there is a role for them. And I'd like to suggest that the easiest way to deal with that is by reducing the level of sugar in our drinks. Some 600 former LIAT employees get the green light to proceed with court action against the Antigua and Barbuda government on the eve of the second anniversary of their termination as they seek to get millions of dollars in financial entitlements they claim are owed to them. News of the breakthrough came on Thursday from a Barbadian pilot, Neil Cave, who along with four of his colleagues had filed a suit in the Antigua High Court, challenging the constitutionality of Section 564 1A of the Companies Amendment Act 2020. We get more in this Emmanuel Joseph report. The judge ruled that the section of the Companies Act complained of was unconstitutional in that it was too broad and not rationally connected with the objective of the amendment, which is to allow debtors, including LIAT, to pursue rehabilitation by affording it protection from enforcement by its creditors and therefore cannot be justifiable. The judge also ruled that the section also infringed the principle of separation of powers as the automatic stay of proceedings removed new and current matters before the oversight of the court. Commenting on the outcome, Cave told Barbados today, it's been a good day having been rewarded after what he termed two terrible years. It's a huge victory for us, for a handful of pilots. It, 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 gives, it gives all of the Liat employees at least the right to a fair hearing now. And to us, it's a tremendous victory. And I, I, I would like you to point out as well that as, a, as somebody who is a believer in the law, and, you know, I'm also studying law myself, almost finished, and it, it just brings back, and I've talked to my colleagues that are involved in this, it brings back a tremendous amount of confidence in the system, okay, and, and um, we, we believe that the judgment is fair, and we are just grateful, having gone through what we've gone through, that the judge has given us what we consider to be a fair, a fair ruling that will at least allow us to have our day in court. Earlier on Thursday, before receiving news of the ruling, a group of ex-Liat Barbadian pilots updated Barbados Today on their latest situation, the day before the second anniversary of their dismissal from the St. John's headquartered airline owned by shareholder government Barbados, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Dominica. One of the pilots, who did not want to be named, disclosed that they were informed that the $2,000 per month advance from the Barbados government, which the local former employees were receiving, has been discontinued from last month, 
That's March, two months short of the promised 12-month period. I'm Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. Local farmers are being urged to have a say in the Black Belly Sheep Breeding Initiative between Barbados and Guyana. It's coming from a Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Agricultural Society, James Paul. Recently, Agriculture Minister Indawe said Barbados was working closely with Guyana to achieve the goal of having a million Barbados Black Belly Sheep within the next five years. At a press conference on Thursday, Paul said farmers should show interest in the program in light of the fact that Barbados needs to significantly increase its black belly sheep stock. And certainly um, the opportunity of at least finding markets in Guyana is something that we will want to explore. And also too, one of the things that we also want to continue to have is that, Barb that the Barbados continue to be the leader in terms of sheep breeds especially as it relates to the Barbados black belly sheep. The Barbados black belly sheep belongs to Barbados. Um, and I think that one of the things that we have done over the years and we are even going to continue is to encourage farmers in good husbandry practices so that, for instance, we can actually increase the numbers of animals that we have available at the same time. And one of the things that we are actually looking to do at the same time is to actually expand the breeding flock within Barbados so that, for instance, we can better meet the demands for local Barbados um, black belly meat. The thing is really though that, again, here's an opportunity for, for us. Um, we've heard a lot of um, the government talking about it in terms of that relationship in Guyana. And we will want to see on Saturday, invite the farmers on Saturday, Saturday to see how we can benefit. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. To news from other region, five people, including three seniors, have been arrested in Guyana for possession of 20 pounds of cocaine and a number of ecstasy pills. We get more in this report from News Source Guyana. 60-year-old James Hubert, 62-year-old Lena Narine, 72-year-old Jennifer Butcher, 47-year-old Gregory Faria, and 27-year-old Jamal Narine were all arrested during the operation by the Customs Anti Narcotics Unit two days ago. They are expected in court before the end of the week. According to Kanu, during its operations in the Prashad Nagar area, agents discovered 10 parcels of cocaine and the quantity of the multi ecstasy pills. The 11.4 kilograms of cocaine has a street value of $12.5 million according to Kanu, while the 266 grams of ecstasy pills has a street value of $400,000. Kanu agents suspect that the packets of cocaine were being prepared for trafficking out of Guyana or possible local distribution. The investigation is... And finally... On the international front, the war in Ukraine will cause negative economic spillovers around the world, with the poor taking the biggest hit. That's according to the International Monetary Fund. The poor are most likely to be affected, with a large share of expenditure, with a larger share of, of their expenditure on essential items like food and fuel. The concentration of effects in these categories mean that the cost of living squeeze, uh, if you like, hurts the poor most. Um, agricultural communities uh, will face con conflicting effects of these shocks, higher prices for inputs, think about fuel, think about fertilizers, and outputs, uh, agricultural commodities, and um, how these play out, the eventual balance uh, depends on local conditions, but overall it's going to be the low-income 
uh, households uh, and producers that will be hurt most. That's what that's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.